welcome! Welcome, thank you for joining us, welcome back. We are a close-knit family. <laughs> I'm Sue! I'm Michael. Today is March 12th, 2019, this is episode 47. We are a knit cast, coming to you from Armstrong in the North Okanagan region of British Columbia, Canada. Following my adventures as a newer knitter and our ongoing yarn and knitting addiction. Thank you for taking that and running with it. <laughs> <laughs> this, this time change has oh, completely, so... completely thrown me for a loop. Yes. For those of you who do not experience time changes, uh, over the weekend was daylight savings time f change for us, which means... Spring forward. Spring forward, which means we lost an hour of sleep. And I've just been a basket... I, I mean, it's so stupid. Yeah. But I, it's just really... It's really screwed with yes. me this time. I don't know why. Yeah, I am of the opinion that we should get rid of daylight oh, savings Oh, so many people agree with that. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. Skies above Armstrong. It snowed last night, and I've heard and a lot of... And a little of, bit this morning. And a little bit this morning, and I've heard a lot of people hope that this will be the last snow of the year. Gosh, which it's I not going so. to be. But. Well, no, I mean, we've had snow in April before, so yeah. it's just, we forget that every year. Yeah. Every year we forget that there is snow in April. That we've had snow at other times of the year. Yeah, otherwise it's been quite warm. Yeah. Yes. See, look, I am a total, like, I'm... I, yeah, I right out. very nearly fell asleep at work the other day, and <sighs> I was, yeah, anyway, so yeah. moving right along, yes, indeed, you don't need to hear about that, so we're going to, we've been talking for a couple weeks now mm -hmm. that Mike's birthday is coming up, one week from today, March 19th, next week, and Mike wanted to do a giveaway, I did, for his birthday, birthday. So Mike, yeah. what do you want to give away? Well, I we had a look at what was in our giveaway stash and we found some of my favorite yarn from my favorite dyer. Some Noro uh, silk garden yarn. In fact, we have two balls of Noro silk garden yarn. Look at, look at, look at the colors in that. Yes, this is colorway th number 341. Uh, and I, yeah, Aww. I love it. I'm, I hate to see it go, but I'm, but I'm glad to know that someone else, uh, will be, will be getting to use that. It's just, the colors are yeah. so nice. And they're, and they're long, they're long variegations. So, and yeah, and this is a, um, so these are 50 grams, 100 meters. 45 silk, 45 mohair, 10 wool. Yeah, very, very nice. Mm -hmm. So you're probably wondering, how can I get my hands on these two beautiful skeins of Noro yarn? It's going to be difficult, so Terribly. I want you to take notes. Okay. Okay, get, you got your pen and paper you ready? ready? Do you want us to pause for a minute? Pause, pause, let people get their pen and paper. Okay. No, stop that. Not that kind of pause. Oh, not, not really actually pause. No, not okay. really. Because what would be the point? True, yeah. We'd pause and then we'd keep going. So anyway, all you have to do is wish Mike a happy birthday in the comments under this video. The YouTube comments. The below. YouTube comments. If you're not sure, you can't see them because I went through that when I first started watching YouTube stuff. Just scroll down below and... Yep. And there's comments there. All you have to do is a happy birthday, Mike. Yep, and you will be entered. And uh, next week, I work all day on my birthday, so I can't. Uh, so we can't actually record that day. But on our next episode, we will be doing a draw from uh, from those names, and the winner will get two balls of Noro Silk Garden. Yay! Yay! Happy, okay, well, happy birthday next week. <laughs> well, hey, if you want to wish somebody a happy birthday today, today is Robin's proper birthday. Robin, happy birthday! Robin is my girlfriend, and I she has been on the show. I should have got her something. Yeah, you, uh, I, well, you you got her something through me. I paid for her most recent set of nails, <laughs> so. So that's not me getting her <laughs> I am a gel nail tech. Yes. For those of you who are new to the, uh, us. To, 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 who are new <laughs> to this. This. 
<laughs> oh my gosh. So oh, speaking loopy. of which, you, yeah. I, you know, I was I moved into my new salon mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's going really well. I'm glad to hear so, that. So yeah, I'm quite liking my new salon in case anyone was wondering how that was going. Yep. And I am now properly moved into this well, space. Yeah. Well, as much as, you know, this is our podcasting corner and that corner is where I have all my computer and stuff set up. Which means, I think I'm jumping around here, do we want to, I don't know, do we want to stick to the script or kind of talk a little bit about streaming? You talk about whatever you want to. Alrighty, I am finally going to start uh, those streams that I've been talking about now for two or three weeks. Right. We are going to be starting uh, this Thursday at noon o'clock Pacific Daylight Time uh, with a little bit of World of Warcraft. Um, I will be narrating the whole thing. The whole The point is that you don't need to be actively paying attention, mm -hmm. but, um, yeah, so, uh, but I, I have no ideas really for the, uh, for the character yet. It will be streaming on this channel. I've already set up an event and a reminder. You can set yourself a little, uh, in your subscriptions feeds earlier today, there should have been a little, you know, set reminder live stream happening. Uh, yeah, so the very first thing that we need to decide and maybe something you can start thinking about. Are we going to join the Alliance, the Horde, or are we going to be a panda and just put that decision off to later? My plan is to be a tailor. I have no idea what any of this means. It's okay. So for all you gamey people, Yay games. So it's like go sports. It's so, okay, well if you <laughs> if we want to if we want to relate it to something a little more common, um Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Frodo, Gandalf, them, they would be Alliance. Yeah, okay. That's Sauron good. would be the horde. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. So the stream this Thursday Noon Pacific. Noon Pacific whatever yeah. time. Yeah. I guess we say Pacific Daylight Savings Time now. Yeah, specific, yeah, Pacific Daylight. Whatever, Pacific P PDT. Time. Time. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's awesome. So something that I really, um, okay, two things happened. Uh-huh. I caught Patty Lyons, again, you'll hear me say it all, but on Christy Glass Knits on, mm -hmm. her, on her channel, talking about gauge swatches. Okay. I've taught you how to do gauge swatches wrong. That. I know. Bum, bum, bum. I taught you wrong. Okay. It's okay. It's okay, Mom. So, really interesting. But what I learned from watching this thing with Christy Glass and Patty Lyons talking about gauge swatches is that I've been doing it all wrong. Okay. And I learned how to properly form a stitch on your needles it was it, it was a wealth of, anyway from there um, I found out that she's doing a knit along right now for a new pattern and this is uh, it's called the Roselle T and that's a picture of it Ooh! Ooh look at our lovely round light mm -hmm. um, now that it's reversible so that part what we're looking at could be the front oh. or it could be the back. Fascinating. So the um, the other side of it is is essentially uh, plain knitting but it's still got the um, what do you call it like it's got the, sh the, the shaping the same. Mm -hmm. So Along with her knit alongs, she's got videos on like how to gauge swatch, how to pick your proper size, how to pick your needles, how to make sure you've got the right yarn, how to like just how to, how to, how to, how to, how to, how to. Mm -hmm. And um, this has some interesting shaping in it. It's got lace, it's got set in sleeves, it's got all sorts of neat stuff. And so I joined the knit along because I think there's a lot that I can learn from Patty Lyons. Okay. So, you know, there's that. But to give you just sort of a quick, um, sort of what did I learn about um, forming stitches? So, 
What I really learned from her about um, stitch formation is basically I've been knitting wrong all my life. Beg your what? Well, not wrong. But, so, what she talks about is, of course, the whole point behind having a needle that's a specific size is that you want your stitch to be that size. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, but I've been doing it wrong. And, you know what, it's too hard for me to show here what I'm talking about because I really need to be, you know, up above. But essentially, to try to put it, um, when you make your stitch, mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm trying to do this, but I just... Here, but here we are. But here we are, because it's super good information, I think. Okay. So, I don't know about you guys, but when I make my stitch, like I, I, I put my needle in. Yeah. And I get my yarn around there. Yeah. And I pull it off, and I, I'm pulling it off at the with the tip of the needle. Yes. Pull it off. Okay, now I'm stretching the yarn out hugely, um, dropping that over, and then I'm kind of like, okay, I'm going to tug it and make it the right size. Yes. Well, part of what you're doing when you do all that tugging is you're stretching the stitch that was down below. Um. So you're not making the stitch to the size of the needle. Um. And if other people will, will do it just up right on the very tip and then again like pull it through. Anyway, you're not getting a true stitch. She explains it way better than I do. Perhaps we should just refer people to that video. So it's worth having a look at, but she's really, uh, she's like, get your needle, put it right through, make your stitch around there, and make sure that you're pushing, you're sizing your stitch to your needle. I gotta have, I have to go watch it again too because, because I do. I feel like I've kind of been doing that because I'm just not comfortable knitting right at the tips of the needles. Well, it's how you're pulling it back through and anyway. Okay. It was just, it was really, really interesting what she had to say and mm -hmm. just all the ways that that can affect your gauge and when you get, um, uh, even purling, I gotta go back and watch it again because okay. there was well. First, I'm because I'm in the the knit along. I'm gonna look at the section on gauge swatching mm -hmm. from that and yeah. yeah. So so may, maybe I'll use this as an opportunity. There's some feature in YouTube where there's like a little eye up in that corner, um, and you can make it like pop out with links to relevant things. So maybe uh maybe right now. It should pop out with a little link to Kirsty Glass's video, assuming I make that work correctly. If you didn't see anything, then you can infer that I didn't figure out how to get that to work. Okay. Yeah. So that, yeah, it was just really, really, really neat. So I'm looking forward to this knit along like I needed another project. Yeah, yeah. But I'm looking forward to learning lots of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert, I'm kind of in that area too right now. Anyway, um, so... In what area? Uh, needing something, needing a new project. Because... Well, I, I don't know, I need projects. I need projects. Um, you've got your cowl. I have my cowl. My cowl? My cowl! Yes. My cowl! Oh, it's sitting are, there waiting for you to start knitting I it. I keep forgetting about my cowl. Yeah. Anyway... <laughs> I, um, yeah, so I, I saw some, uh, some rather, uh, entertaining photos over the last week of, uh, male celebrities knitting. Mm. Uh, the first one I saw was, um, Sir Patrick Stewart in knitting. <laughs> make, in, make it so. Yeah. Uh, knitting in Santa pajamas. And yeah. it was just, it was meant to be a, you know, in case your day is not going well, here's Sir Patrick Stewart. Knitting in, in Santa pajamas, but I also can we put that in here? Um, yeah, I'll I'll try I'll put the whole post so that we also you know credit the credit person. the people yeah. who yeah yeah there it is, and um, isn't that cute? Yeah, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and the other one I saw, which actually had a little bit more uh, story behind it. So, many of us have heard of a movie called Mad Max Fury Road, uh, starring... I can't remember who what his name is. A uh, guy. A guy. It was fairly... Maybe I'll put his name up. It was a fairly recent movie. Uh, the most recent Mad Max movie, uh, critically acclaimed, all that good stuff. Um, one of is the it, is, is that the one? It, is Ian McKellen? McKellen? In, no, okay, never mind. I don't think so. Anyway, um, one of the lead actresses, Char Charlie's Theron. Char Charlie's. Charlie's Theron. Yeah. There we go. Um, she would spend her off time on set knitting. And this intrigued a lot of the actors, and she ended up teaching most of the cast of Mad Max Fury Road how to knit, which leads to this photo of a war boy knitting. <laughs> Apparently somewhere there does exist a photo of Charlize Theron and all the war boys sitting on one of, you know, Mad Max Fury Road's ridiculous overdone vehicles all of them knitting. All of them knitting. And, oh, um, how much fun is that? Yeah, I just thought that was, I thought that was really interesting. Um, I was trying to figure out in the photo what he was knitting, because he seemed to be kind of going in a circle. Right. So I, I couldn't figure out if he was, you know, maybe garter stitch, scarf, or what. But anyway, I'll, I'll show that to you later, and maybe, you know, maybe we'll put a thing up of here's mom's comment on that, or yeah. not. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted, I just thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, and sorry, I'm just thinking back, not to leave you hanging on the whole gauge swatch thing and doing it wrong all my life. When I do my next gauge swatch, mm -hmm. I'll show you what I've been talking about. Oh, okay. When I have my gauge swatch done. Okay. All right. Yarn at Yarnquisitions? <laughs> I can't speak today. Uh, it's okay. okay. I can't either. So last week... I talked about um, getting some yarn to try out some Tunisian crochet. Mm hmm So I got yarn. To you got try yarn. Out yeah. Tunisian crochet. Um, and I'll have to show you the other one later when I talk about my Tunisian crochet. Um, I'll just keep my finger over that. So I got this. Uh, so I got some Barocco Vintage. Now it's a baby blanket, so I wanted to make sure it was something washable. So this is uh, acrylic, wool, and nylon machine washable. And um, yeah, so it's it's for a baby girl. And I've got this pink, a, a darker pinky purple in the same and then um, they recommended at the store that this Cascade Anthems in kind of an off-white would be another good option for that and this one is a hundred percent acrylic this is considerably heavier than this one mm -hmm. so um, they're not it's certainly not a perfect thing but it's working out well enough for my Tunisian crochet project. That's good. So yes, that was those are that's my yarn acquisitions this week. Alrighty, I did not acquire any yarn. Mm-hmm. All right, Foes! Foes! Mike. I finished my socks. Well, they're almost finished. Um. So yeah, my mud punch yarns, goth rainbow socks. Uh, those stitch markers are. Still are still in the same place from last episode. I just basically finished up the cuff and I just need to weave in some ends and uh, um, block them and they'll be all done. Or yeah. block block them, then weave in the ends. I'll I'll need to do one. I'll need to do one of those things. And this is the first pair of socks that I've knit for myself, so I'm looking quite. Ha I'm looking forward to these. Yeah. Yeah. I really like how the colors came out. Yeah. And, and the pattern is the, if mom teaches you how to knit a sock pattern. <laughs> Su Su <laughs> Sue's, I, I call them Sue's Simple Socks. Sue's Simple Socks. Mm -hmm. Sue's Simple Straightforward. Toe up socks. So you want to knit a sock. Yeah. And yeah, they're very nice. Toe and up, yeah, heel flap gusset. I love these colors. Mm -hmm. I think they're amazing. Yeah, it's just like a, it's just a rainbow with probably like a black wash or a brown done over yeah. it and it's 
It, it, it really evokes goth rainbow. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're toe up, as Mike said, toe up and, and heel flap and gusset. So there's, there's no picking up stitches when you go toe up as opposed to top down when mm -hmm. you're doing the, the heel flap and gusset. Um, and a slip stitch heel. Yep. And um, I did yeah. two at a time. Two at a time. Magic loop. Magic loop. Yeah. yeah. I like them. Very nice. Oh, I, I, I need to get more socks cast on. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love. I don't. I don't even wear commercial socks anymore. I yeah. like my. Well, I yeah. I, I, I <laughs> um, I would do that, except my job dictates that I need to wear black socks, which means I would need to knit with a black yarn. And what did I say? <laughs> Don't do it. Don't do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't do it. Um, so what? that's your fourth pair of socks, though. Yes, that is my fourth pair of socks. Look at you go. So do you, how, do you feel, how do you feel about that? It's addicting. Sock knitting is kind of, it's nice, it's, isn't it? It's yeah. a lot better if there's some sort of pattern happening. So in Absolutely. this case, the stripes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to using that, uh, that yarn that Robin got me for Valentine's Day, because it, it appears to be a patterned yarn as well. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. It, yeah, I think it's, it's a self-striping too. Yeah. And also, even if you're doing a pattern that's like, got like a four row, you know, repeat where mm. you're, you're just changing a stitch here and there, it's like, yeah. you've always got that something to yeah. look forward to and they really keep you going. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well done. Okay. Okay. Whips. Whips. Okay, so I sort of half pulled this out already, so I'll just okay. keep pulling it out. This is uh, my Nightfall cardigan uh, by Ellie from Skein Deer, and I have started working on um, this sleeve. I haven't got, so I finished this one. This sleeve's all finished, and um, it fits amazing oh that's good I that. am so in love with this sweater um, and you can now get this pattern on its own you don't have to get the full gradients book anymore oh. yes nice so it is now available on its own nightfall from skein deer knits mm -hmm. and I'm using the juniper moon Patagonia 100% organic Peruvian wool. Yeah, and I know last week we talked about, you know, when that wool was in a skein. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't great. But now that it's all knit up, it's like, oh, that's nice. And wait till it gets washed. Oh, man. It'll, yeah. Oh, it's not here. It'll feel like my Fintry shawl. Mm. And so light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's... So light. Yeah. But it also has that weight of being, I am very warm. And so, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah, it's a yeah, it's a really re I am in love with this yarn. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with it. It is very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what's going what do you got for I caught up on my temperature scarf to uh March eighth. Here, I'm gonna pull mine out at the same time. Okay. So I was around uh I was around here last time we heard about last time I showed this off and then uh, all the way up here, this these last two rows are March eighth. So yeah, we had some had some cold weeks in there where I had to dip back into the blue red, uh, but also the the highs were quite warm, so the light blue is also present. And um, yeah, we're getting back up into a bit more green at the top there, so we're warming up. And um, yeah, this is re it's really interesting. I really yeah. like I really like this idea for a project. Yeah. And so I've got mine mine going here and I'm thinking I was like in around about here when when last I showed this, but mm -hmm. I got I think I got about 2 weeks behind. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, where there's the red color, that's when am I showing you the right side? I don't think I am. Anyway, not that it matters that much. Yeah. Where there's the red color um is where again, yeah, the temperature dipped it cold and um, yeah but if we have to go way back here those greens are where we got above like five degrees yeah so it, it's funny because it's been a fairly sort of consistently 
It's been consistently blue purple with a little bit of red and a smattering of <laughs> yeah, green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, for me, it's been consistently <laughs> light blue with little little bits of dark blue, and 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 one I think one week where I got into double green. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> All already, I'm I'm thinking about the next time I do this scarf. Cause and, the, and what you'll do differently? Yeah, what I'll do differently. Yeah. I would rather do it in stockinette. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I concur. I, yeah, and um, if I'm really feeling brave, I would do it uh, double knit. Double knit? Oh yeah, yeah, you said that. You were going to do that. Yeah, two right sides, so one side's the low, one side's the high. Uh, yeah, you're using Allison Barnes yarn. I'm using Allison Barnes yarn. This mm -hmm. is her um, Struggle and Strength line. Mm-hmm. And th that's what all the yarns are from that line, and I'm I'm working with just those colors, and I'm doing I'm holding them double. I'm trying to find one of my labels. All oh, right, I'm using Barocco Vintage. Oh, the same as me. Yeah, Barocco Vintage. Oh, oh, put that down so it doesn't fall over. Yep. Uh, is this a DK? No. Uh. Two, uh, yeah, it's a DK. 200 meters to 100 grams. It's a DK. Okay. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. So I kind of, you know, got in on your whip there. Oh, yeah. It's like, well, let's do that all at once. Yeah, so so well. we have been running a knit along for yep. temperature scarf. And so there's no reason, you know, you can really start doing something like that anytime. Yeah. So, just, you know, you, know, you started yeah. in March. So, yeah, so you started in March. Well, that just means you'll, you'll finish in March as well. Okay, and this spider web of yarn. <laughs> <laughs> what do you have there, Mom? <laughs> it looks like a real mess, but it's not as bad. So this is my Tunisian crochet. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's the, the pattern. Oh, shoot, I forgot to write down her name. Uh-oh. It's like here it is. Oh, okay, good. Thank you. It's TL something. Anyway, so this is gonna be like a little gingham baby blanket. It's very cute. And we do this, and then there's a border around the outside. Okay. And for anyone who's wondering, what is Tunisian crochet? Tunisian crochet. It, oh man. Yay! Sue's being awkward again. Um, Tunisian crochet is done with crochet hook and a cord either a really long crochet hook depending on the size of your project or a crochet hook with a cord and this is um knitter's pride and it's the same cord that you would use for your needles yes and then you just put a stopper at one and end. you just put a stopper at one end and my work doesn't go all the way to the end, so I thought, ah, I don't need a stopper. Yeah, you need a stopper. I pulled my yarn off the other end, so. Nice. So the way that the Tunisian crochet works, the reason you need the um, the, the stopper, or that you need the... The, uh, the, the cord, the long needle. Thank the... you, the long cord. Is you actually, you go along and you load up all your stitches, all the way to the other end along the cord so it looks a bit like knitting when you get to the other end right you just go and you pick up just doop 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 pick them up and then from the other end you come back doop 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 doop, doop and and suck them all back through each other um, and so this is the simple stitch mm -hmm. and again we put up that uh, lady's name and there's no point in me trying to teach you something that she teaches better than I could ever mm -hmm. do um, and yeah so you have kind of those little bars and yeah. okay, and that's a mistake uh, right yeah. there. I I, <laughs> I described this as a very square stitch. You know what? It almost looks like waffle. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Anyway, I really like it. Mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying it. And this has been this has been getting a lot of my work because the baby's born. And um <laughs> You're, you're zipping along there. Yeah, so I haven't worked at all on Harton. And um, yeah, so another um, kind of a whip. Uh -huh. I don't know how this is going to go, 
But when I made this sweater last year, yes, my yeah. my stroll in the orchard sweater, mm -hmm. what I made last year with uh, yarn from Midnight Cravings, yes, um, and a little bit of mohair just for fun. Mm -hmm. So when I made this, a lot of people said, "Are you gonna can you know Are you gonna do a pattern for that?" And I said, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Um, because I made no notes. Oh no. And um, I was really just sort of, oh, that looks like a good place to stop. And um, I was absolutely 100% basing it on like how much yarn I had. Right. Because I had um, the, the five colors in... Um, 50 gram skeins right yeah instead of like full skeins so I was just like how far do I think I can get yeah with the yarn and that's literally how I made this I forgot this was so soft so well it's that I mean it well it's combination but it's that mohair yeah I mean the the merino is soft too but the mohair just adds that little like makes you want to mm. pet it mm -hmm. Um, so I have started the rather onerous task of figuring out what I did. Right. And then trying to also make it, um, make it make sense. Because there was a lot of sort of the decreasing and stuff that I was just like, oh yeah, I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but now it's like, okay, let's maybe try to... Let's try and make it like actually make sense. Yeah. Just just for fun. Yeah. Have you got the publishing pattern bug? Where you you now you started publishing patterns and you can't stop. Well, <laughs> it wasn't as painful as I thought it would be. Right. And thank you to everyone who has um and is still downloading the... supporting yeah supporting Catherine Ann hanging up now... in the background there yep. um because um yeah that's just that's fun mm -hmm. but no I mean people have been asking me for that they're asking me for that other sweater pattern mm -hmm. I suppose I should put up the you know if mom taught me how to knit yeah. socks or something yeah. I don't know Shoes so anyway socks. that's kind of a kind of a whip that's it's a it's a work in progress and I'm just sort of go, going to that when I don't have something else to do here's a funny story because okay. I don't have this is my <laughs> this is my to go knitting this is my purse knitting <laughs> <laughs> you actually you made it to go bag <laughs> but I mean this is I mean, I can actually, like, you know, get it get it right in there. But purse knitting is supposed to fit in your purse. Yeah, that is your purse. And, well, it's not my purse. <laughs> but, I mean, my purse is well, yeah. this big. Right, yeah. So, I, mean, I, I just mean, think that's funny. It's like, okay, maybe I should cast on a pair of socks. Just yeah. so I have yeah. something I can reasonably bring with me. Sorry, so well, you... Well, speaking of Catherine Ann... Speaking of Catherine Ann... Uh, I'm making progress on Catherine Ann. I think I got four rows in in the last week, which means I've started on the lace. Uh, where's the right side? There's the right side. I may have to just steal it from him and finish it. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit worried because you, yeah, okay. this is all I have. So did you do what I said and weigh your yarn? I did not. But I'm going, I'm going, I went based on the, um, I wouldn't have enough yarn. Just okay. To be safe. Especially because I accidentally did that extra row. Oh, you did rows. an extra, oh my with, god. With this, um, so yeah, this is all sorts of problems and disasters. Okay, um, so I would stop working on lace right now and go straight to bind off. You sure? Yeah. Okay. You're not going to make it. Okay. So I, I guess I'll be binding this off pretty soon here. Um, and uh, yeah, so I got a couple rows into the lace. I don't really feel like I got enough to actually like see how the lace turns yay, out. Yay but... lace! <laughs> yay lace! I was really, I was really excited to see how that turned out. Well, but... <laughs> at least you've got another yarn you want to. Um, you know... to for a nice. It needs to be DK, right? Yeah. I don't think I've got any DK kicking around. I think I, would... I think I mostly have DK in my stash. Oh, so... you might have something so else. I'll, yeah, I'll just have, uh, I'll just have to find something that can kind of match. Maybe and... that ancient arts. 
that yarn that you had for your cowl. For my cowl, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. Because you could also go for a completely different color, too. I think yeah. that would be kind of neat. Yeah, I'm thinking, um, there's that, um, <laughs> that World of Warcraft named one, Stormwind. Uh, yeah. It has it has some of the blues and the and the grays, but it also has a little bit of orange in there. So I was wondering, so maybe maybe something like that. We'll see. You'll maybe see this next week, and maybe it'll be bound off. Who knows? We'll find out. But it's look like I mean, yeah, it looks great. Mm -hmm. It's upside down, but it looks great. Mm -hmm. It's I upside love down because it. you knit it from the top down. I love it. Yes, I do too. It I is a very it, nice I pattern. I love it, I love it. That's the Catherine Ann by Sue Gerrans. Download it on Ravelry for free. Mm-hmm. <laughs> for free. I get nothing for it. It's just for fun. Mm-hmm. Yay! You get, you get the satisfaction of knowing that other people like your designs? Yeah. Yeah! I'm looking forward to seeing it. It's funny, it says there's six projects. Mm-hmm. But only three show up. So, and it, like it says you have a project, yeah. but it doesn't show up. So I'm thinking... Oh, I haven't put any pictures on it. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's it, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So, Mike! Oh, hi! That's Whips. That was the end of Whips. Yes. So, Mike! Hi. What do you bring to the table? I bring to the table a city planning game involving rolling dice. This is sounding a lot like Welcome To, but it is not Welcome To. It is actually much older than Welcome To. It is... Machi Koro, uh, which is a game, as it says on the box, by uh, Masao Suganuma. I am probably butchering that pronunciation. Uh, Machi Koro is a dice rolling game, which, if I may steal a line from Shut Up and Sit Down, board game reviews, uh, it reenacts the thrill of a slot machine in a family friendly way. <laughs> With, you know, okay, gonna roll the dice, see what happens this turn. And uh, the idea behind Machikoro is that you are building the town, the city of Machikoro. And you have a couple uh, landmarks that you are trying to build, and they are your, they are your goal in the game. Uh, you purchase smaller businesses and establishments to add to your city, to increase your income, and uh, in some cases, take income from other players. And yeah, that sucks, by the way. <laughs> I realized that uh, to stop you from winning, I should have actually been doing that more. Anyway, um, and uh, yeah, it's a nice, it's a very simple family game. Um, and uh, yeah, it's appropriate for between two and four players. It takes about 30 minutes to play, especially if you're mum and can catch on to the concept right away. Smoke. Sm yeah, uh, <laughs> I, we yeah me mom and Robin played the other day. I think Robin and I had like one or two of the four final game establishments done. And mom Robin did really really well, and Mike was playing like a creep. <laughs> <laughs> it's appropriate for age ten plus. But I won. <laughs> It's appropriate for ages 10 plus. Machikoro from, from IDW Games and Pandasaurus. Uh, great for families. Very good game. Mike kept taking coins from Robin. Because she kept rolling threes. And when, when a three is rolled, I take coins from oh, whoever rolled the dice. Stop it. <laughs> All right. All righty. Events from around the world. World, world. Okay. Excellent. Mm hmm So, we'll try to do this in, in date order. Okay. Oh, that's going to be a lot harder than... Because it's not written in it's date not order. Written in, it's not written in any semblance of date order. No. So, uh, on Friday, March 15th. This Friday. That would be this fr coming Friday. A couple days from when we're recording on mm -hmm. Tuesday. Um, it's the Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival held at the Double Tree Hotel in Green Tree, Pennsylvania. Pittsburgh Creative Arts Festival. In Green Tree. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Okay, on Saturday, March 16th. Okay, can I, can, I gotta tell you right now, obviously I wrote this and never said it out loud, or tried to say it out loud. Okay. Okay, so Saturday, March 16th, Fiber Feast. At the Artornish 
Art Art Ornish or Tornish Primary School, St. Agnes, South Australia. We should go to that. We should go to that. We should go to Australia. We should. Or we should go to the one in Iceland. Or there's like two bar nights that keep showing up too. There's the one in Storbridge. Okay. And there's another one in Helsinki. Oh. In Finland, right? Finland, Finland, Finland. 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 A little bit of, yeah. a little preview okay. Spamalot yeah, for you there. Spamalot, Spamalot coming up for those of you in the neighborhood. I'll be in it. End of May? Uh, end of May, start June. Yeah. yeah. Get your tickets. They're I don't not, even they're know. Not, they're, they're not on available sale. yet. <laughs> tickets aren't on sale yet. Okay, March twenty, and that's an event coming up in Vernon. Okay, March twenty second and twenty third is. I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. It's Fibers West in Surrey, BC, and yeah, all sorts of things, fibery and yarny and shearing and mm -hmm. and shearing and fleeces and spinning and weaving and all sorts of fun stuff. Okay. Be there. Be there. Okay. Alrighty. <gasps> that's about everything. I think that's about it. So don't forget to wish Mike a happy birthday. <laughs> I don't know why, but the way that sentence went, it, it felt like it was going to end with, or else. <laughs> don't forget to wish Mike a happy birthday. <laughs> or we're going to get ya. No, we're not. No, Please. we're not. No, we're not. I am beat red. We, we okay. Wanna, we want to give you. <laughs> I want to give you. I want to give you this yarn. We want to give you yarn. Have some yarn. Have some yarn. Have, Have some, some yarn. yarn. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so <laughs> that can be your comment on this video, but please also don't forget to. Oh. Did I tell you how fabulous the the OSO was the other night? You did not tell me how fabulous the OSO was last night. We went the to night. the Okanagan Symphony Orchestra mm -hmm. on Sunday night. Yes. And they were doing a tribute to the Oscars. Mm-hmm. I was I was embarrassed. And our friend our friend Melina and her son were were singing with the orchestra. And how much fun would that be to be singing with an entire symphony orchestra? I mean, yeah, I've played in high school band and that was fun enough, I can only imagine. Um, but um singing singing aside, they were fabulous. Oh. Singing aside, they just they started out playing and I think the first medley they did, I think it was mostly John Williams like movie themes. Mm-hmm. And we're sitting there, and they just got started, and I started to bawl. Yeah, so that, that's like um, that's like Star Wars and oh, uh, Indiana Jones. See this now? I'm thinking it wasn't John Williams. Okay. And it, because they then later on they definitely did John Williams for sure, but it was just all sorts of those wonderful movie themes that yeah. just emotional and yeah and it's there and it's uh, like it, it just sounds so amazing when you are hearing it like straight out of the instruments yes it does live music oh is very good. anyway that was just a little aside yeah really enjoyed that justin did great so did yeah. melina okay and, yeah Alrighty. please remember to like this video comment happy birthday mike below and subscribe hit that little bell icon to get a notification straight to your phone every time we upload because apparently that's when that's wednesdays now um and uh and that might change that might change <laughs> get notified whenever we upload you never know it could even go to two weeks oh man yeah but we'll see what happens yeah uh, follow us on Instagram, Close Knit Family Knitcast. Uh, join us on Ravelry. All the information for that will be on the end card and in the description. And as always, keep, keep your knitting close. Family close. Oh, I always I meant to do it the right way around. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try that again. Keep, keep your, your knitting, knitting close and your family, family closer. closer. Bye. Bye. There's actually a prompt here to tell me how to do that. <laughs>